Good day, gentlemen. This is Swashbuckling Sir here, and today we're taking a peek at a puzzle game currently in development, which is Monsters and Medicine. In Monsters and Medicine, we build and manage a hospital, and we are always adapting to deal with an increasing number of patients that queue up and wait to be cured. <laughs> So welcome to Monsters and Medicine. I'll jump into a very early level here to just explain the basics of Monsters and Medicine. So we manage a hospital and as you can see this is the queue here and monsters line up to get cured. We have currently three rooms available, a red one, a green one and a yellow one. As you can see the green monster is jumping and the yellow one is jumping as well. Which means those two can get into the hospital, but then the last yellow one can't get in because the hospital is full. So what we do, we drag from the side, these are the available set pieces basically. We drag one in and just decide where to build it and we'll just add it here. And now the yellow monster can also get in. Now we don't have any free slots for the yellow one, but we would have one for the red. But as the two yellow ones are in front, the red one can't get in currently. So I try to reduce the queue by building another yellow room. And now the red one can jump in here. So basically what we have to do is manage the queue and manage the available space in the hospital. And thus, you know, manage how you treat the monsters. Hopefully effectively. And in the entry area you see you have to cure 22 monsters and if 7 die I lose. So this is the green and this is the red basically, the bar that fills up. Now I see there are a lot of reds, uh, red monsters coming up, so yeah, reds. So I'm going to build another red room here. And since now my space is, you know, filled, my building space, I have to build a new corridor. That's what I did earlier too. And I can attach it to basically every slot here and it always attaches to two rooms but if I build it here nothing happens obviously so I'll expand here or here since this has more potential obviously I'm going to expand here now I see these five get in the red one doesn't but I think that should be fine but there are four yellow ones lined up behind so I'm going to build a yellow room so plan ahead a little bit. Now I can see the heart of these red monsters are blinking but they are not quite filled. Which means that this turn they are not fully healed thus they don't go out thus this cannot go in. And I also see the amount of hit points they lose before they get in. So they will not die yet which should be fine. So I think I can expand one more and prepare basically. Now these get in, the, yellow, the last two yellow ones don't. So I don't have any yellow rooms. This is where this button comes in hand. You can click it, which consumes a turn, but you get reshuffled cards basically. This is the one thing. And I'm going to build nothing here because I want to show you the last thing here, the well, rainbow drink or whatever. This allows you to heal a monster. So let's say I don't want this green monster in the queue because it's probably going to, I don't know, for whatever reason, mess up my queue. Then you can just give it to him and you instantly heal it. But it also consumes your turn. And now what you see here, the blinking indicates that the yellow monster is going to die because there's no free bed. So I can save him either by dropping the drink or by providing another room. Now these are very simple mechanics so I'm going to jump through this level very shortly now as the first monsters die because I messed around in healing them. Usually I found that you don't want to use the heal vial too often. Now the intriguing part is that while these simple mechanics you know they wouldn't grip you to keep on playing but the fun thing is that what is this it's shiny let's play this 
to show you the complex mechanics later on in the game. Because once you get accustomed to, you know, the basics, then a lot more stuff gets thrown at you. So it's not just that I have a lot more colors now, as you can see, blue and green and purple and red, which I'm going to build because I have two here. Then I'm going to build, well, probably the green here. Because now we have different rooms that are very intriguing indeed, which are these ones. As you can see, this is the symbol for the bed. So this is the bed. And this is the symbol for the bed and these arrows or these yellow uh, signs basically indicate which area these buff. So these are basically boosters. So these, if I would build it here, would boost the whole row of rooms with one extra bed. These, the ones in the corners and these, the rooms attached to them. This room here increases the healing capacity. So as you can see here, the red monsters, they get basically five hearts healed per turn, while the two only get, the green only get healed two per turn. And this increases the healing capacity of the rune basically, so it increases it that much that every monster, no matter how basically dead or injured they are, they get healed up instantly, which is quite good. However, this room, since it had a red sign underneath it, also subtract a bed, subtracts a bed. So you don't want to use that for the blue ones. So later on, as you can see, the, a lot of mechanics add onto the game, get, gets, you know, yeah, stuffed into the game. Now there's one more thing, which is the purple monster here. As you can see, the purple monster here, it blinks, kind of, and the monster in front of it has these vampire teeth attached to it. This monster is kind of a, yeah, it's kind of a sucker because it likes to suck off hit points of the monster in front of it. So as you can see, the blue one here loses a lot of hit points while the purple monster does not. So they survive quite long, but they, you know, tend to kill your other monsters in the queue. So you have to be careful about that. As you can see, I will let him drain one now, so this I can't, you know, stop. If I build this, you can see, he, oh yeah, the red monster got in, okay. So he couldn't suck hit points, but he is going to definitely suck hit points out, right? I don't think I can stop this in any way, shape, or form. I should probably, you know, build something that's actually useful. And... The blue one's going to die, and I don't think I can do anything about it. Except I could heal the purple monster in front of it, because this is not going to be ready in time. And thus these two jump in here. Yeah, that we can do. Let's give this guy a drink, and we save this. This is basically what you do. You try to figure out what's the perfect way to treat the monsters as, you know, as well as you can while at the same time providing, you know, the thing is you can't... Sometimes it's useful using these, you know, the reshuffle and the drink and everything, but most of the time you really want to expand your hospital because this is what's going to win the game in the end. So it's a very nice mix and it grows more complex once you get accustomed to... You know, once you get accustomed to anything, you learn new stuff and yeah, that's very... Very intriguing, and you don't get bored by it. Now, there's one more thing I'd like to show you. Uh, as I said earlier, this subtracts a bed. So, it increases the healing capacity to maximum, but it subtracts a bed. If I would put it here, you would think, you know, 1 minus 1 is 0, but you can't have 0 beds in a room. So, it's actually quite useful placing this um, so to the side of rooms, only have one bed anyway. If I would upgrade this now, it would not help because it's one, it's one bed minus one plus one still stays at one basically. They kind of just have the minimum of beds at one, but the minus one is still attached to it. So as you can see, the game grows very complex and I kind of I really like that. 
However, there's one gripe I'd like to mention. And I just want to jump out of the level and show you the early parts of the level again. So as you can see, I have two green and I have, this is my set of rooms, basically. If I start building now, I'll get a blue and a purple one. And I have these set of rooms. If I restart again, yes, confirm. I will have a different queue. So while the monster colors and in general the boosts I get are very similar, they are randomized. And also what I draw once I place a room, as you can see here, I place this. What new card or what new possible room I can place I get is randomized. Thus, it can happen due to no influence by yours that these randomly generated effects basically lead to you having no chance of actually winning a level, which is quite annoying. And I kind of wish it wouldn't be like that. But it has one positive, which is the randomly generated nature allows you understand mechanics and not just go by trial and error and just figure out the pattern that you, you know, need to win. So that's kind of cool, I guess. And overall, Monsters and Medicine has a lot of content it offers, so there's a huge amount of levels. So I'm going to jump out again just to show you the amount of levels you saw when I scrolled down. And this is still new mechanics that appear. And there are so many levels. It's over 100 levels at least. And I'm currently here and it still continues. It's crazy. And in the main menu, you even have a random generate button. So you get a randomly generated level, which is amazing stuff. So you have a lot of content in here, a lot of stuff you can play. But I found the randomly generated levels are quite easy. So maybe, maybe it's not quite balanced to your progress yet. I'm not quite sure how this is managed. And I'm not going to explain these. They're going to be hidden for you. You have to find out what they do when you delve into Monsters and Medicine for yourself. Because if you like puzzle games overall, Monsters and Medicine is fun. It's a nice little game to play on the side, for example, while you're listening to a podcast. And it's available on the developer's homepage for four dollars currently and once released for five dollars. It has a cute but simple graphic style, a soundtrack, which is not worth remembering. However, if you like puzzle games, check it out. There's also a demo available. As always, thank you guys very much for watching. Consider dropping a like on the video and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day. Goodbye.